My name is Ramsey. Welcome to Slay the Spire, the Challenge the Spire mod. Uh, we're going to be playing with the Ironclad in Bronze difficulty in Boss Rush, checking out what this is all about. I have to imagine it's going to be kind of similarly formatted to Boss. Oh, whoa, whoa. Of course, the relics are going to be completely different because the previous ones only affect elites. Uh, the Coria, the Merchant Resox, Cards, Relics, and Potions, and all prices decreased by 20%, as well as all of the three different eggs to upgrade attacks, powers, and skills that get added to our deck. Uh, and the map is too sh Oh, right, because all of the eggs upgrade every card, right? So the first one doesn't want to be a rest, but the later ones are. So shop, shop, three bosses for the first floor, boss relic, shop, rest, three bosses, shop, rest, repeat. Uh, all right. I don't know if we're going to have enough time in these early shops to actually generate a, 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 a build. So I worry... What do I worry about then? Well, what I worry about at that point is... Like, do I keep digging through relics until I find a core strategy to run? Or do I keep digging through cards until I find, like, Perfected Strike or something like that? Like, what am I looking for here? Do, do I just try and make, like, a, a deck that's kind of, like, well-rounded, but not particularly great at any one thing? I don't know how well that'll do against three bosses in a row. Like, I think you probably need something that's pretty broken for that. I'm going to take Pommel Strike first. Oh, now there's no strikes left. Metallicize is on sale. I'll take that. Maybe I just want to go to the shop after this. Orange Pellets. Whenever you play a power attack and skill in the same turn, remove all the debuffs. Yeah, that's probably reasonably easy to trigger as well as Vajra. Then we'll card remove. Probably not a strike, but a defend. Just because the Pommel Strike is already leading into a perfected strike build if we can find it. Well, Mind Blast, and then you just fill the deck with as many cards as you possibly can. But that's, like, outside of hallway fights, which there are none of. That's probably not that great. Reduce the cost of an attack in your hand to zero this turn. So it's just free damage if I'm playing only attacks. I'm going to take Flex, Leading Strike, Wild Strike, and Uppercut. And then I'll remove another card from the deck from the defend. So I'm tending this obviously very, very, very aggressive, but I'm ideally... Oh, I'm taking another metal size as well. Um, I'm ideally looking for perfected strikes at this point. Okay. Oh, you even choose which one to reduce the cost of. Okay, that's actually a lot better than I thought it was. But randomized the cost reduction. 22. I mean, that splits the enemy. And I'll split them with the 33. Possibility still exists that I managed to take no damage out of this entire thing. Alright, well, the possibility no longer exists, but at the very least, I can heal up after this is complete. Probably should have used the bash there so I didn't split the enemy. Yeah, feeling like that was probably the correct idea. Got one of you down at least. There's no more powers in my deck so I can't play orange pellets. Or rather I can't use orange pellets to purge. Right. Is this the worst combat for us on the first floor? No. No, that honor is probably held by the Guardian. Strike from hell? Well, that's a strike. Yikes. Obviously, what I'm looking for there was the uppercut. Oh, we got it. That's okay. Weaken the enemy, removing from them 12 damage this turn. There's no status effects that possibly impact us, other than flex, I guess. So yeah, if I can flex and play enough stuff to trigger the orange pellets in the same turn, then I'm definitely... Definitely going to want to do that. But, you know, if. I'm not going to try and force that. Alright. 
This deck is getting a lot worse as it continues. Double strike is great. Pick up there. Ooh. Even an uppercut. But yeah, this this isn't gonna be everything we want for the later bosses. So we definitely need some perfected strikes. Wax seal. Relics and shops cost 20% less. Borrow 100 gold at a shop and add a curse to your deck until you can pay it back. Take none of those. All right, Guardian. Well, we leading strike to uppercut, then we uppercut. Metallicized strike from hell. Sure. Damn it, Flex, you couldn't turn up a hand later. Not gonna wild strike yet. It's very important I don't dilute my draw at this point. Oh well. Orange pelleted nothing there. 21 if I go for the wild strike, 33 if I go for, uh, sorry, for the strike from hell. Yeah, that's not too bad. We should be able to get out of this pretty happily. All right, so what am I then worried about afterwards? Well, boss relic. Definitely want extra energy as my boss relic. Like, that's almost guaranteed. The black hole is from Hubris, not from any of the mods that I currently have installed. Which is to say, I can't just infinite with Strike of... Ooh. Oma Mori, negate the next two curses you obtain. Interesting, interesting. So I take that drop kick. Uh... Which is to say that the black hole, which exhausts any card as you try and put it into your discard pile, is not going to be an infinite with Strike from Hell. It also reduces all of your costs to zero. Well, here I can remove five cards from my deck, obtain two curses, and those two curses immediately get negated by Omomori. The problem with doing that is that the only strategy this deck currently has access to is Perfected Strike. So if I remove five cards from the deck, I'm removing like parts of that build. Uh, there's also Mark of Pain, but in a deck that's relatively thin at the moment and doesn't seem like it's going to be up that many more cards, uh, getting those two extra wounds in the deck is actually really, really, really inhibiting. Runic Dome is kind of fine, right? Because we're only fighting bosses, and bosses typically have determinate move patterns. All right. Well, the thing we can do here is just get 200 gold from the Wax Seal. Because the Omomori negates the attempt to put those curses into the deck. I'll take Drop Kick pretty happily. Uh, probably Medical Kit as well, because it allows me to start picking up a couple other cards I otherwise might not. Remove a defend, take a shrug it off, and a shrug it off, and a true grit. Okay, so now we've picked up a pretty good serious amount of defense right there. I'm worried that I do want to skip this with our money for the next shop now. Start of each combat at a random card which exhausts your hand across zero until played. I always like those value pickups. Pretty important I rest here, obviously. I don't know how well we're going to fare against these bosses. Exhume, really? Cost zero until played. Alright. Well, I didn't... I forgot that the enemy was attacking that turn, actually. Hopefully I draw Flex right now. Damn. Flex would have been the perfect draw because it would have had the trigger of orange pellets that turn, so I would have kept my strength. I'm just going to trigger at the Exhume. I don't have that much in this deck that I exhaust and want back, really. 
I'd love to throw in the Wild Strike. I think the enemy might just be buffing this turn. Oh, no, they're debuffing. That's fine. Okay, so Metallicize. We'll use a Leading Strike on the Dropkick. Dropkick just gives us the energy back. We play Flex. And we purge all of the debuffs. Beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Uh, to weaken the enemy is probably to avoid more damage here, right? If I use the uppercut. Sweet. They're also going to be purging this turn. Drop kick. Or strike. All right. Well, time for them to purge. So now I need to deal 110 this turn if I can. That's not looking good for me. I'm going to throw a weakness on the enemy because they will deal a bunch of damage this turn. Yep. Ouch. Oh, that's that's bad. At the very least, they use defensive stance that turn. All right, there's our champ kill. Dreamcatcher, whenever you rescue me out of cards to your deck. There's also Metallicize and Offering available here, as well as Strike from Hell. Strike from Hell is probably the least valuable, Offering probably the most. One thing I'm not going to want to do is use Offering unless I have a plan for it. Seven damage, seven... Well, five damage from the frontliner because they were weakened. All right. Let's metallicize, and then drop kick this target. Then drop kick this target. Even leading strike you to make the pommel strike cost less. And then double defend this turn. Uh-oh. So it's possible that the Collector is now doing a single giant attack. That said, it doesn't change my turn at all, right? Even if I didn't have Runic Dome. Never mind, now they've done the debuff. Now they'll be doing their single large attack. My apologies for fear-mongering beforehand. Okay. No, they summoned. All right, Runic Dome. Really making a fool out of me here. Yeah, we're just dead. Just dead. That was pretty much always going to happen when we didn't find a perfected strike for that build. Well, damn. Do I just value pick or do I try and pick to an archetype? Because I think value picking is going to be fine uh, right up until the, like, the second floor bosses and the third floor bosses, where I'm fighting three bosses in a row without healing in between them. So I really need something. Kind of broken to go through that. Ring soul once per room when you add a card to your deck, gain three max HP. Eh. I could take Necrogeddon and start trying to take a bunch of exhaust cards, but that seems like a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe it's a great idea. Cards which exhaust when played will instead discard 50% of the time. Obviously, we don't want to do that if we put Necrogeddon in the deck. I'm going to take Brutality, Necrogeddon, Warcry, Warcry, Offering. Oh, now we've seen Entrench. That could be interesting. Um, guess I'll just remove a strike from the deck, move to the next space, see if there's anything more interesting here. Feel no pain. Whenever a card exhausted, gain four block. Really important for us. Uh, there's another Warcry as well. True Grit as well. Burning Pact as well. Uh, Apotheosis. Upgrade all cards in your hand to the rest of the, In your hand. In your deck until the end of combat. I mean, that only hits my Strikes, Defense, and my Bash. Uncanny Aura. Any unplayable cards at the end of your turn. You gain two, in, uh, two Strength in decks. Probably not. Abacus, whenever you shuffle your discard pile, gain six block. I'm pretty into that. I'll take Burning Pact, another War Cry, and another card removal. So the idea here is just that I keep exhausting cards until I blow up the enemy with Necrogeddon. It's going to be interesting, I'll say that much.
do feel kind of bad putting a Feel No Pain into a deck where I know there's very few exhaust cards now. So I should probably burn out my offense, right? Necrogeddon deals six damage. Get it back. Necrogeddon deals the number of cards. Yeah. Well, this is effectively how I, I figured the deck would run, but... Obviously, it has the added negative. Equal to the number is... Was it not equal? Like, I could have sworn that beforehand it was equal to multiple times. Or something like that. The number of cards that you've played. Like, this is okay. It's really defensive. Like, it's an absolute defensive powerhouse. And if I can add, like, another draw card to this, then great. It's going to be incredible. Oh, God. I guess I'm just kind of scared. Is this going to work better against some bursts and worse against others? I simply don't know. All right, well, there goes Guardian. Dreamcatcher uh, Sentinel, if this card is exhausted, gain three energy. Sure. I have a bunch of ways to exhaust. Bunch of ways? A couple of ways to exhaust that in my deck. True Grip Burn Sentinel. Throw back pretty much anything defensive. Warcry Burning Pack next hand, not bad. So we'll Burning Packed out that strike. True Grid out that strike. Warcry still, really? Well, ain't that interesting. Warcry still didn't get us all the way down to the Necrogeddon. Bash, Necrogeddon, and then Burning Pact on the strike. These burns being put in the deck are actually really good for us. They give us some other targets to burn out. I do want to be playing Necrogeddon multiple times each turn now, though. Thank you for the extra burn. This enemy only really gets super intense when you can't deal with all of the burns that are in the deck. And obviously we're not in that position. How do I get more cards that exhaust? Specifically cards that exhaust. Because that's what I'm looking for, right? Necrogen. Then I'm gonna burning pack to this. Get the Necrogen back. Unceasing top would be an infinite with this pretty quickly. Shuffling the deck multiple times by trying to draw cards where there are none available is ooh, good fun. See how Abacus is triggering multiple times there? Beautiful. Stone Calendar at the end of turn 7, deal 52 damage to all enemies, as well as Dark Embrace whenever a card is used to draw a card. Um, yeah, I'm taking Dark Embrace, sure. It'll just draw out my entire deck on turn 1 if I happen to get it. This enemy is going to put slimes into my deck that we can at least cycle. That's good. All right. 
What does this deck now need? That's something I've got to concern myself with, right? What is it that this deck still requires? Because I think it might just be like another copy of Feel No Pain. And something else. There's something else missing as well, definitely. Sundial? Sundial the Relic would obviously be incredible for us. Oh, wow. We actually interrupt the enemy at that point. I did not think that would be the case. Funny that. I can't believe we can actually redraw our burning packs from itself. It shouldn't be able to do that. Almost certain it shouldn't be able to do that. Obviously, I'm okay with it at this point, though. Lantern, Sludge Combat with additional energy, as well as Defy Death. Gain 14 block costs less for each card you've exhausted this combat. I mean, it's very playable. How often would I end up exhausting it, though? Pretty commonly? Mm, it's still super playable. Ugh, Snekowai. So the problem with Snekowai here is that all Warcry is a zero cost, so is Offering. Uh, and Brutality. So it's, it's just really, really bad. But we do want the extra draw. Like, two extra cards drawn per turn is actually really good for us. Uh, Runic Pyramid. At the end of your turn, you no longer discard your hand. I'm kind of fine with that as well. Let's keep the right cards until the right time. Completely changes the way that we play from here on out. Ooh, Calipers! At the start of your turn, lose 15 block rather than all of your block. That is incredible. So is Exhume. In fact, we might just go for each of those. Pet Ghost is interesting. Add a ghost card to your hand every turn. Your max hand size is increased by one because those cards both exhaust and are ethereal. So every single turn, we exhaust another card from our deck if we have that. But if I take that, right? Uh, 143. Oh, I can only take Calipers and Pet Ghosts. I wouldn't be able to take Exhume. But taking Exhume, I get a copy of a card from my exhaust pile and then I exhaust it again. It's difficult. It could be either of these pretty easily. I think I need the calipers. What? Oh, it was 100 off. Sorry, 100 off. I was 10 off on the ability to get pet ghosts. That's fine then. If I can't get it, I can't get it. I'm totally okay with that. Just remove a strike then. Good thing I ordered myself there to buy the most impactful thing first. Going downwards from there. Bash is the only card in my base deck I actually care about upgrading, so now that we've got it upgraded, we are good to go. Mm -hmm. Fine opening turn. Got me a fair way through the deck. Uh, let's bash that target because we do need them bashed eventually enough. Uh, okay. I'm gonna Necrogeddon, True Grit the Sentinel. Use Warcry for a wee bit of draw here. And then start burning out more negatives. Great. Great, 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 great. Oh, right! It's because I have the Dark Embrace that the that the wait where is it oh you took burning pact uh, it's because i have the dark brace that the burning pact returns itself to my hand i didn't even think about that but of course it is it gets drawn one time by the dark embrace and gets drawn another time by burning pact Hell yeah. So I'm gonna Necrogeddon, Burning Packs the Defend. Necrogeddon. I mean, I should probably be defying death every time I do this as well. Necrogeddon, Burning Packs another 
Defense. I need more cards in my deck to exhaust. That's what I really need for this build right now. Fire Death, Necrogen, Burning Pact, that. And then we just continue to play these. We get a lot of value per turn. And because of the Calipers, we're actually still blocking like a significant amount per turn as well. Yeah. Because the Burning Pact is no longer exhausting a thing, it doesn't redraw itself. Beautiful. This is a really broken way to do this. Or a Calcum as you end your turn without block gain. Six block as well as another true grit. Sure. Ultimately, even if I end up with a corruption, I just still need this many cards in my deck. Bad opening hand right there. Beautiful. At the very least, it bodes well for my future hands. Because those can't be that bad. It's true Grit, a strikeout. It's time to Necrogeddon in just a bit. This will draw two cards, then another card, then it'll put a thing on top of my deck, right? So I Necrogeddon now. Nope, okay, it puts a thing atop my deck and then draws that thing, so I shouldn't have necrogened a while after that. Okay, Warcry. Really? Gonna put me in exactly this position. Necrogeddon. Burning packed out the defend. That gets us Necrogeddon to defy death, and then we burning packed out the other defend. I need cards that whenever you exhaust them, they just add themselves back into your hand. I need wild, wild strike, strike from hell. I need exactly the card strike from hell. Unfortunately, it's also really important that I keep the enemy vulnerable. So I have to keep the bash in the deck for a little while longer. I should be pretty comfy now. Necro again. Bash. Burning packed out the Divine Death. And next time it's going to be Burning packed out the, dash, uh, the Bash. So I get to Necro again three times here. Uh, pretty good. Still doesn't defend me against all incoming damage, but at the very least, we know the enemy's dead this turn to the Stone Calendar. Quetstone upon pick up upgrade two attacks. Uh, power through. I didn't take Meg Kit yet, so I can't take power through as a great option. Power through does give me the ability to generate a bunch of wounds that I can then exhaust. So it can give me two cards per turn that I can exhaust. This is a reversal. Keep block at the end of your next three rounds. Not important. Gain three reflection. Kind of important. I don't want power through. It's overhandling to get the achievement that we uh, the achievement the effect that we're look, looking for. Right, we'll be in this fight for long enough to use the re full regen potion, so should start that up. I also either need an energy relic after all of this is said and done, or. I need another copy of Sentinel. Alright. Just going to keep burning through all of these cards. 
Doesn't matter what I put on top, I'm getting both of them back. Still need a bunch more cards to exhaust before this is good. Unfortunately, I have to hold on to the bash for a lot longer than I otherwise might. And that's because when the enemy purges, they will actually remove all of the vulnerability applied to them currently. Alright. A single entrench in this deck would actually enable me to build pretty easily a uh, near infinite block. Or rather, effectively infinite block. Right, should have thrown the bash there, of course. Get rid of Defy Death. Don't really think I need that anymore. So I can play those. Getting out our Necrogeddon multiple times. I think we've got this here. Yeah, we do. Beautiful. Time Eater is going to be an absolute annoyance for this. Uh, Garlic, at the start of each combat, apply three Languid to all enemies. Havoc? If Havoc exhausts Necrogen, we lose. So, no. Uh, Sozu, gain energy at the start of each turn. You can no longer obtain potions. Abe's Treasure, gain energy at the start of each turn. Start each combat with Drowning. Drowning is a debuff that causes HP loss. Taking unblocked attack damage will increase Drowning. Dealing unblocked attack damage lowers it. Uh, and on pickup, add a copy of Abe's Revenge to your deck, a Soulbound Ethereal Curse that applies to Frailty, and Ring of Chaos. Some card rewards have randomly altered stats and effects. I think we have to take Sozu. We want the extra energy so that we can get this build to go off a lot faster. Panache. I mean, Panache is a lot of damage for our deck. I'm going to take the bargain bundle. Whenever you purchase this relic, the cost of cards, potions, and the card removal service in the same shop are reduced by 100 gold. So I'll take the bargain bundle and then take Panache and Warcry. Uh, card remover strike is not a bad idea here. Or non attack damage you deal. What? Pen nib. Every tenth attack you play deals double damage. Our attacks don't actually deal that much damage at all, so. I guess I'll take another True Grit for free. Battle Trance? No, that'll slow down our draw. Do I want Metallicize in this deck? No, we generate enough defense ourselves as well. Taking Metallicize is just another card in between me and my ridiculous defense generation from other sources. Uncanny Aura, no, we don't keep cards in our hand. Well, we do literally keep cards in our hand. It's just we don't keep unplayable cards in our hand. Um, the problem is Uncanny Aura might become essential. Because the heart is the final boss. But I also have so much exhaust in my deck that I think I get to exhaust all of those. I just don't see how this deck beats the heart. Like, this will do fine against everything else, but it will die against the heart. Definitely. All right, I'm going to purchase some extra cards literally just to try and shore myself up against the heart. Rupture, whenever you lose HP from a card, gain one strength. I mean, brutalities, that's one strength every single turn as well as offering. That's fine. Evolve, whenever you draw a status card, draw two cards. It's great for us. If we put status cards in the deck, we might end up doing that. Um, I guess I'm also going to take on Canny Aura. I, literally, all of those are bad pickups for us right now. But they're all pickups to try and make me more resilient against the heart later. All 
Alright. Taking my requisite one damage there. Offering does find me rupture though. A lot more draw to do. Beautiful. We got Dark Embrace. That's what we were looking for there. And now we finally have Panache and Necro getting out. Sweet. It's true grit, a Sentinel, and then a defense. Neat. Panache is probably going to deal most of my damage at this point. Like it, I think it deals its 14 in the same amount of time that I take to deal my own. Uh, Necrogeddon for, what, 13? Less, dependent. So Uncanny Aura isn't to pick up for this fight, so I don't have to worry about it. I have a lot of cards in this deck that I can burn out because they weren't for this fight. They were for some other fight that I've not yet found my way to. Sundial would have been an incredible relic for us, but alas, we lack. Obviously, Unceasing Top would have been incredible as well. Okay. Blow both of those up. Do it again. So we play five cards in a turn as well as two Necrogeddons, so... Eh. It's okay. The extra strength every single turn does nothing for us here either. The fact that we're losing one HP a turn is actually pretty sad. It'd be nice to see a good regen potion or something come up. See, this is something I don't really understand. Ooh, we actually get to do an extra time here. Beautiful. This is something I don't really understand. Like, over the course of four shops and, you know, however many card selections, right? So nine card selections. How are you supposed to build a deck that kills the heart? The heart is real particular. Bottled Flame. Put a card in my open hand. Sure, I'm going to try and put Necrogeddon there. Might still go to the discard pile. We'll see. Yeah, it still goes to the discard pile. Wow. That's wild as hell. Dark Embrace Warcry. Yeah, well, I'm looking for defense here right now, game. Yikes. That was legitimately my best attempt at finding defense there. Feel no pain, finally found, and now we should be okay. All these war cries have to get out of the deck sometime. Offering here. Necrogeddon gets up. Start burning out some defense and Necrogeddoning multiple times in a turn. Alright, good. I should now be able to build an impenetrable defense. And again... Only three cards even need to be played per cycle here. And then I'll just Warcry, put whatever atop the deck, it comes back. So I end up with a ridiculous amount of block anyway. Oh, Strike from Hell would have just been a perfect pickup. 
I hope Strike from Hell didn't turn up earlier this run and I looked at it and then dismissed it because... Ugh, that's that's a, that's a short-sighted one there if I did. Alright, I only get to play three cards next turn. So I'm not going to actually kill the Time Eater. That's fine though. Thanks to Calipers, we should be still pretty healthy. Sweet. I even now get to burn Bash out of the deck. Hell yeah! Good kill right there. Uh, Strawberry, raise 7 max HP. Dual wield? We can dual wield Necrogen. Yep. We take dual wield, we get multiple copies of Necrogen. That's, I think, the only way I can really get this done. Okay, almost locked for full damage this turn. We have a... a penchant for blocking for exactly one less than the enemy is attacking for on the first turn. Kind of interesting. Let's go and pack out the strike. Rupture. I mean, I can just get like multiple copies of Rupture here as well. I think I just do that. Sure. Now I have a uh, poor man's war cry. That's kind of good. Poor man's war cry. Poor man's war cry. Poor man's demon form, sorry. That's kind of decent. Okay. Well, we've got one dazed in the hand, so we don't burn out uncanny aura. With good reason not to this time. Okay, we save Necrogeddon until we get the card that synergizes with it. Dual wield, thank you. Dual wield Necrogeddon, and then I think I'm just going to war cry a couple times here. Not really accomplishing anything except for exhausting a couple more cards. Uncanny Aura actually gives us a, some strength in the decks that turn. You will the Necrogeddon as well. I think with six Necrogeddons in the deck, we should be fine, right? Yep. So Dual Will. Dual Will was our savior. Uh, Golden Egg. Whenever you add a rare card to your deck, it's upgraded. Whenever you purchase a card from the merchant, it's upgraded. All right, that doesn't necessarily help us with this build. Reaper? I think we should put a Reaper in this deck, actually. Just the ability to heal back up during the combat is pretty big. Okay, Dark Embrace will True Grid a strike. We're just looking for... Uh, can I play Brutality? I have to play Brutality. That means I can't play Burning Pact this turn. No, no, no. I'll use the Attack Potion to generate an attack that I will then Burning Pact. Beautiful. So I can find some more cards. Dual Wield and Reaper in the same hand. That's kind of good. Evolve is really good here, actually. I'm going to True Grit the Sentinel. Keep digging. Okay, we get Panache out. The more setup we can get accomplished here on turn one... Beautiful. Feel no pain is exactly what I'm looking for. The more setup I can get accomplished here on turn one, the better off overall we'll be. So, I, I have the Brutality out, so I do want to dual wield Rupture, probably even multiple times if I can get it. Do I want to play all of the Ruptures this turn? I think there's a possibility I don't. Yeah, I think I do want to dual wield that rupture a lot more. 
Those burns completely overtake our hands. I really should have thought of that. Yeah, we could die. Oh. Oh gosh, that's awful. Okay, I went into fire death at the very start here. True grit that defend out. I don't know if I can afford to play this offering. Well, Offering is 6 HP, and then I have 5 more turns to kill the enemy. In 5 more turns, they will already be ridiculously potent. I think I still have to play the Offering. I also do have the Reaper in the deck. Still. Do I want to have the Uncanny Aura go off? I think I do need to get Bash out of this deck. I don't think I can afford to actually hold that. It's burning Pack to defend. Okay, I want to dual wield the Rupture again. Yes, I understand how powerful Necrogeddon is, but... It's a bunch of extra strength and decks for us right there. Fire Death, and then True Grit out of True Grit. We don't need infinite of them. Okay. Let's Necrogeddon. Then Dual Wheel the Rupture. Get all of those Ruptures out on the field now. Next Dual Wheel probably wants to go on to Reaper. Okay, so we'll defy death, Necrogeddon, dual wield, the Reaper. Drop one. Dual wield the Reaper again? I think so. I mean, there's no reason not to try and go back to full HP at this point. Keep myself as safe as possible. Hell yeah, bud. So back on completely full HP. Now I want to start dual wielding the Necrogeddon. 66 damage. Man, when did I exhaust all that? Right, it's actually their strength that's really carrying me over the line here, not Necrogeddon itself. So Necrogeddon was an interesting build, but god, it didn't need to be like this. Let's get the Uncanny Aura out of the deck, and then we'll start burning out those burns as well. Can't do any more damage this turn, so turn them over. And we almost did a perfect amount of damage for each of these hits from the Necrogeddon. Oh, well. Well. So I was just talking about how I didn't know if this could actually beat the heart. 26-15. Pretty good. That said, this deck was really broken. So I don't know how many other decks we're going to have that can actually beat the heart in that mode. That was bronze as well, so it's only getting harder from here. For the moment, my name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Challenge the Spire, the boss rush mode for the Ironclad. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.